All right, this is another part in my series on Google Slides tutorials. And uh, this video is going to be about vector icons in Google Slides. So what we're looking at right now is Snakeplant. Snakeplant is a resource that I released on Product Hunt about a week ago, and it's a collection of vector icons. So I've already converted a lot of these vector icons, and then I'm gonna show you how to do the conversions yourself. So for starters, if you hit get it on Snakeplant, it's going to ask you to make a copy of my deck. Okay, let it do its thing. And now we're in a copy of the deck. So benefits of vector icons, I'm going to keep this brief, but they're fast loading. You know, images like this, this is a PNG or a JPEG. It sometimes takes a while to load. These can also break when you share decks. But with vectors, you're not going to run into those loading issues or, uh, you know, the resource issues. They're scalable. I would say that's a big benefit and colorable. So let me show you what that means. So with vectors, if you're familiar with the, the you know benefits of vectors from any kind of design software, I can go in and change the color to my theme color there. I can scale it up. I can scale it down. Okay. All right. So let's get into how to take an icon and convert it into a format that's friendly with Google Slides so we can get that vector into our deck. So if you're familiar with icon design, there are lots of collections out there. Uh, two of the most popular collections are Feather, okay, feathericons.com, and Material Design. So Material Icons is now part of Google Fonts. And uh, you, know, you can download a, a vector directly from either of these sites. I can download the SVG here. But for Material Design, the entire collection is part. If you go to figma.com slash community, you can see the official Material Design collection here. I'm going to do this process from scratch, so I'm just going to hit duplicate. And that's going to create a copy of the Figma file that has the entire collection of material design icons. So if I head over to the tab here, this is all of them. So if I'm in need of an icon for a deck, I can just browse this either in the web app or in the Figma file directly and look for an icon that uh, matches my needs. Okay, so I selected three icons for a hypothetical slide. Maybe I'm making a deck about some app that has, you know, social features, events, and is very secure. I don't know. I just chose three icons. Now I'm going to run through the most basic way of getting these vectors into Google Slides, and then I'll show you some more advanced techniques as well. So first I'm just going to group these and export as an SVG. Okay, and then I'm going to pull that SVG into Google Drive where I set up a temp folder. Okay, and then I'm going to open it with Cloud Convert linked to uh, my Gmail, and I want to convert that SVG to an EMF. Now, here's the super important step, and I actually uh, I got to give a shout out to um, Jeffrey Chung who uh, commented and helped me figure this part out on a Product Hunt. I'll also say I didn't invent this workflow. There, I was taught it by a coworker, and there are a few posts out there, Reddit posts and whatnot, on how to do this. Um, so I'm not taking credit for this workflow at all. I'm just showing you how to do it. The most important thing is you have to save the output files to Google Drive. If you don't check this box, if you try running the conversion and then uploading the download to Google Drive, it will not work. Okay, so you need to be using a Cloud Convert uh, account that's connected to your Gmail or connected to your Google account, and you have to have this selected. Okay. Disclaimers out of the way, we're running an SVG to EMF conversion. I'm going to hit convert. Download. It's not actually going to download it, it's just going to open it in Google Drive. Now I need to open this in Google Drawings. So I can either do that through this open with menu here or just select it down there. What that's doing is it's opening the EMF in Google Drawings which is compatible with Google Slides. So now all I have to do is Command C, head over to whatever deck I want to be in, let's add a new slide, and Command V. Okay, so now the, uh, and I can also go in and right click uh, ungroup. So now let's see, I can uh, you know resize this infinitely with no pixelation. I can go in and change it to my theme color. I can do anything as if these are vector icons because for all practical purposes, they are. 
Pretty cool, right? So now we have our vector icons in slides and uh, let's get into a little bit of a more advanced technique. So if you watch my previous video on grids, we're gonna wanna get a little bit more control over the sizing and positioning of these icons. So if you notice from Google Drawings, wherever I have that still open, the sizing of these icons is pretty arbitrary. If you remember, we didn't frame them before exporting from Figma, we just grouped them here. So it's a pretty small group, 112 by 24, but when we pulled it into Google Slides, it became really huge. And if I'm uploading multiple icons on multiple slides, I wanna have control over the sizing, make sure that that's consistent. So here's one up in the uh, grid video. It's that 16 by nine aspect ratio, 1000 by 563. And I've got my uh, grid columns set up that match the grid columns over here. I can go ahead and turn those on. Okay, so it's pretty much a one-to-one -one replica. I'm gonna pull this over here. And now before I export, I'm gonna do the sizing and positioning and uh, everything over here. So let's say I want them uh, like this. Maybe I'm doing some kind of three up layout or something like that. And then let's actually make them a little bit bigger. So let's maybe go to 48. Okay, is that looking good? Positioning, sizing. I can work well with a card layout. I think that looks good. So now I'm gonna export the entire slide as an SVG and do the whole thing all over again. So I'm gonna cut the video here and then skip to when I have it uploaded. All right, so I've got the vectors open in Google Drawings and now let's bring it over to Google Slides. So I'm just gonna copy this. Let's uh, make a new slide and copy that. Okay, now you notice that it doesn't go full screen by default. So what I'm gonna do is go into Format Options and I'm just gonna match the specs here. Oops, if I go to Lock Aspect Ratio, I wanna go to 10 inches wide and then I wanna hit zero, 00 on the position. Great. Go ahead and ungroup. And then by default, there's like a white background from the frame. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. All right, so now if I wanted to continue on this, maybe I'll grab uh, you know, one of these card layouts, bring that over here, change the slide background, and you know, so on and so forth. Just basically format that as a, you know, a polished three up slide. Borders at the back. Okay, I want to pull that over here. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. You know, maybe I'll go one, two, three, something like that. All right, so there's two more things that I want to note, and the first is about bounding boxes. So if you're familiar with vectors, the bounding icon, so if I'm over here in material, I can see that all of these have this bounding box, which is exactly 24 by 24. And we do this when we design icons so that we can keep the sizing consistent with like one icon in relation to all of the others. Okay, so no matter what's in the bounding box, they're all 24 by 24, and I can resize them proportionately. But when I bring them into Google Drawings and then copy them over to Google Slides, you lose the bounding box, which means that all of your icons are now different sizes. So we got 0.44 by 0.44, 0.44 by 0.32, and so on. What that means is when I resize this icon, you know, it's looking pretty large and it needs to be scaled down to fit into this card. I can't do it with too much precision because, uh, well, you know, now they're no longer proportional. So there's two things that I can do. The first is, as you saw, try to make as near wherever you are before copying the vectors into slides. You know, this is obviously a more sophisticated design environment, and so you have more control over everything. And the other thing that you can do is, when you resize icons, grab all of them, resize them at the same time. That's gonna keep them in proportion, but you will mess up the position method. All right, so that was the first caveat about bounding boxes. The second caveat is about strokes and fills. So I'm over, the, over on feathericons.com and let's say I want, uh, let's say this nice looking pinwheel aperture icon. So I click to download the SVG, hop over, just pull that in. Okay, nice icon, 24 by 24. But if you click into it, you'll notice that it's not unified and these are all strokes, not fills. Okay, and that can be a bit of a problem. So let me show you what happens if I try to take this to uh, 48 by 48. And then if I 2x it again. 
So the icon's getting bigger, but the stroke isn't scaling. And this is a you know common problem in all of vector design. In Illustrator, there's a setting that lets you scale the stroke proportionately. In Figma, there's a, oops, let's see if I can bring this back down. There's a similar setting if I hit K to get to the scale tool, now I can scale everything proportionately. Okay, but the same problem that I'm having if I try to scale this normally where the stroke stays the same, it's gonna happen in Google Slides. So in comparison, all of the material design icons, these are already fills and they're already unified. So you can come over and say that this is just one layer. With Feather, if I wanted to pull something like this into Google Slides, I would wanna clean it up first. Okay, so maybe try and unify all of these layers and then flatten it. And now I have something that's very easy to work with. I can take this and scale it up to 240 and you see that you know it scales proportionately. It's a little tricky because unification sometimes creates some vector issues. So uh, I think that's one of the benefits of Snake Plant, my icon resource, in that these are already all unified and uh, fills. You know, so I can scale these with you and select one of these and deal with all of that.